A human being is not willing to be somebody's pet, not even God's pet. We need to be needed much more than we need to be loved. I can tell you who started Tikkun Olam. You may have heard of them. Adam and Eve. <laughs> no, seriously. It started with Adam and Eve because they were told that they were created to fix the world. It's been a while. <laughs> it's taking a while. So what would a fixed world look like? What are we aiming for? Peace. Okay, that would be good. See, repair the world and tikkun olam must mean something more than let's behave nicely. Because yeah. that's not changing anything, that's just being decent. That's not what's wrong with the world. That's what's wrong with us. <laughs> but what's wrong with the world that the world needs fixing? In other words, there is something wrong with nature, and we have to rearrange nature. That's tikkun olam. So even if we all lived in peace and got along fabulously, it would still be the world as, you know, the world's a world. People can be nice about it, people can be nasty about it, but it doesn't change the world. So peace is the first step, because without it, we're not going to get around to fixing the world. We're going to be too busy with the distraction of fighting each other. So let's see if we can um, describe the problem that needs fixing. But let's consider this thing. Uh, true or false? Human beings are very frail. Human beings are very needy. Human beings are very dependent. God is everything. God is almighty. God runs the world. God doesn't care. He doesn't need anything. So we have to pray to him, beg him to be nice to us so that maybe we can survive. But let's turn it around. You ready for this? We got it all backwards. We are not the ones who are needy. God is needy because he's the creator. He's got a vested interest. He created the world for something and he hasn't gotten it yet. This is not the world he wants. So who's needy and who's not? As long as we continue to think of ourselves as needy, we're going to be in trouble. Because we all need the same thing, so we're going to fight over the same thing. We all need the same space, we all need the same money, we all need the same food, we all need the same... Come on, it's not going to work. If I feel like I'm needy, I become, well, selfish. I become defensive or aggressive or depressed or all of the above. Tikkun olam means the world needs to become a godly world. Well, how is that going to happen? If we're all busy taking care of our needs, how does that make the world godly? It'll make our needs maybe uh, fewer. Maybe we'll be more content with our lives. Does that make the world godly? It's like endless. You know, you fill, you fill one need, you discover another one. No matter how much I have, I still need something else. It, it's so frustrating and it's so depressing. Just the picture itself. You're born into the world with a bunch of needs. Well, let's see how well you handle it. That's evil. What's, what's the point of that? What's the alternative? Uh huh. For 5,000 years, we haven't found an alternative. If I don't need to get up in the morning, I, I, I'm not going to live. And why do I need to get up in the morning? Because I don't want to die. What's godly about this? Tikkun olam, or repairing the world, means the creator of the world needs the world to be a certain way. And we 
can make it happen for him. As long as we're trying to make life better for ourselves, we're going to keep fighting and getting frustrated and getting depressed and suicidal. <clears throat> Children today are coming up with observations and statements that are at first very scary, but then when you think about it, it's really very good. Like, I didn't ask to be born, so why do I have to go to school? I didn't ask to be born, why do I have to clean up my room? I didn't ask to be born doesn't mean that the kid is depressed. He's enjoying life. He just realizes that it's not his doing. Why is it his responsibility? So you give birth to me and then give me jobs? Excuse me. You give birth to me, it's your job. So they're all saying, you decided to give birth to me. You didn't ask me. I didn't sign any contracts. I didn't agree to anything. So you did it, then you pay the bills. Come on, it makes a lot of sense. Uh, that would be a repaired world, <laughs> at least for me. <laughs> Somebody pays all my bills for the rest of my life? Yeah, that's good. But here's the point. I didn't ask to be born is so true. <clears throat> That's our starting position. Now, I didn't ask to be born. Explain life. I didn't ask to be born. So, so if we can't, if we can't, can't make sense of that, we can't get to first base. I'm going to repair the world. Why would I? Get, why would I repair the world? I didn't mess it up. How can I repair the world? And, and what does repaired mean? Makes it sound like it used to be perfect, got messed up, and now we're going to repair it. When, when, was it, when was it not messed up? Before you ate the apple. Yeah, see, before they ate the apple, they were not in the messed up world, they were in the Garden of Eden. Yeah, over there, nothing's messed up. But we're talking about this world, which has always been messed up. It was created that way. It was created in need of repair. And we are God's partners to do the repair. So it's not about us. It's not about our needs. It's about his needs. Now we're talking possibility. If it's his need, then yes, it can happen. We're just trying to help out. So what kind of a world would be a godly world? Ultimately, a world in which there's no death. Now, come on, that's a repaired world. No matter how good you are, comes a certain age and it's over. That's, that's not a good world. I mean, we're so used to it, we don't complain, but... So that ultimately would be a repaired world. So when Adam and Eve ate from the tree, they knew they were going to enter a world in which people die. It's a weird world. Why are we so comfortable with it? Why are we so comfortable with the idea that life, which is great and wonderful and is temporary, but death is forever. <laughs> what a sick view of life. So we got to turn that around. Basically, the message to teenagers or to older, to younger, everybody, stop being needy. Stop. It's just depressing, and, and it leads to all sorts of horrible things. You're not needy. You are needed. You feel the power to that? As long as you're needy, you're the problem. But don't be the problem. Be the solution. And to be the solution, you have to celebrate the fact 
that you are needed, not needy. So I had this experience where the mother asked me to go visit her son who was in the hospital for observation because he tried to kill himself. 14-year-old boy. So I go there, a very dangerous place. It's like a prison. The mother can't visit. Nobody's allowed in there. You have to have all sorts of clearance. So I go up there. The kid is lying back in his bed reading something. People are howling, screaming. They're fighting with the nurses. The place is bedlam. He doesn't care. He's unaffected. He's like, I try to talk to him. He's not interested. He wouldn't even look up. I said, your mother asked me to visit you. Your mother is worried. What should I tell her? Just shrugs me off. I try, I try, nothing. Finally, he says, why don't you go home? The chaplain has already been here. I said, what did the chaplain say? Something stupid. I said, what did he say that was stupid? He says, he told me not to kill myself because God loves me. I said, that's stupid? He says, yeah. I said, I agree. <laughs> I can't imagine God loves you. You're an obnoxious brat. <laughs> See, I don't have a license, so I, can't. I got nothing to lose. <laughs> so he looks up. And he says, so? I said, God created you. Obviously, he needs you. There's something that only you can do for him, which is why you, you're here. But I don't think he likes you. What is there to like? So he's stuck with you because he needs you. He says, well, what if I don't want to do what he needs me for? I said, that's, that's known as free choice. Make a choice. Say, I want to, I don't want to. Take a position. Anyway, by the time I got home, <clears throat> I realized that we have been barking up the wrong tree. We don't need love. We're bombarded with love. Everything's about love and more love and unconditional love and true love and greater love since the 60s, since the 50s. Only love. Love will keep us together. Love, all you really need is love. It's so not true. It's so not true. The boy was right. What the, min what the chaplain said was stupid. Because here a kid tries to kill himself. Not that he had horrible problems. He tried it with a friend. They were having an adventure. So why would he try to kill himself? He was making a statement to the world. And he was saying, I'm not necessary. So I'm here, I'm not here. What's the difference? Chaplain comes along and says, no, no, don't kill yourself. God loves you. It's as if he was saying, yeah, you're right. Nobody needs you. But... God loves you. And he said, oh, that's stupid. If I'm not necessary, what, what's love got to do with it? You know, it's okay for a pet, a puppy, a gerbil, a goldfish. Nobody needs it, but they're cute and fluffy and fun, you know. So you love it. A human being is not willing to be somebody's pet, not even God's pet. So if I'm not necessary, I'm out of here. You love me? That's <laughs> just stupid. I should be here so that you could love me? Which means we need to be needed much more than we need to be loved. Love is like the icing on the cake. I'm needed, I'm necessary, I'm doing something important, and it's lovable. But love itself, <laughs> it really is empty words. I'm not necessary, I'm not needed, I'm not 
valid, but you love me? It turns out, psychologically, not religiously, psychologically, we need to know that we are needed, then we can handle anything. If I'm not needed, every little disappointment, and I become suicidal. Hey, hey, why do I put up, why would I want to put up with this? I'm getting out of here. How do we convince people that they're needed, not needy? Because as long as we feel needy, we're the problem. And we're certainly not the solution. Aren't we needy? Huh? Aren't we needy? Are we needy? Don't we have needs? Right? That was your question? Yeah, we have needs, which we didn't ask for. Thank you very much. So I need to eat. I need to eat. <laughs> what was this, my idea or something? I need to stop eating. I really do. And I can't. Now, don't blame me for this. We were created this way for a reason. Not my reason. So if I designed myself, would I make myself dependent on food? That's ridiculous. Why would I do that to myself? I would not design myself with a need to sleep half my life. And I would not even design myself with the need to breathe. Because sometimes you can't breathe. So why would my life be so fragile? No food, you can't breathe. No drink, you can't breathe. No air, you can't breathe. No sleep, you can't live. What, what, what is that? Not my need, my handicap. <laughs> I'm stuck with it, but it's not mine. Just like I didn't create the world, not my world. I also didn't create all this needy stuff. So really, the way I am is the way he needs me to be. So when I come along and say, I need to eat, I'm, I'm making myself crazy. It's not true. I am designed by a designer to, to, to eat. So when I eat, I'm being and doing what God designed me to do. But then I turn around and say, no, no, that's my need. I need to eat. That, that's pure ego. It's not true. Don't make it yours. You're not the creator. <clears throat> so a beautiful example of the story in the Talmud where one of the sages was dry riding along the road and he saw this guy who was very ugly. And he stops and he says to him, is everybody in your town as ugly as this? And the guy says, hey, don't complain to me. Complain to my creator. A sage stops a guy and says, you're so ugly. So what was that? Sages don't do that. The ugliness was his arrogance. Self-made man. So he said to him, oh, self-made? Well, why'd you make yourself so ugly? He said, no, 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 no. Hey, that I didn't do. <laughs> now go complain to my, to my creator. So, so, what you don't like about yourself, you blame God. What you do like about yourself, yeah, oh, I did that. No, you didn't. So everything about us is not from us. So why do I say I need to eat? I need to get a job. I need to repair the world. You need to? Are you kidding? It's his world and you need to repair it? What about him? It's his world. He needs to repair it. And one of the ways that he repairs the world is by creating us and asking us to be his partners in repairing the world. Now you're talking.
Now everything makes sense. Why am I here? God needs me. Do I need this? <laughs> no. No, I don't need this. If I wasn't born, I would never complain. Because I don't need this. So I am here because I am necessary to God's plan. How do you neglect that? If I knew that I was here because God needs me to do something, would I forget? <laughs> would I say, oh, 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 yeah, right, I forgot. No. That kind of responsibility, that kind of opportunity, I can do something for the Creator? You don't forget that. And it's so liberating psychologically. It's not my burden, it's my opportunity. It turns out that all the pop psychology with all the validate yourself, love yourself, treat yourself, take care of yourself, put yourself first, it's making us crazy. Because it's not true. People who love themselves, put themselves first, take care of themselves, they're impossible people. And they're no happier. They're not. They just need one more thing to indulge in. Then they'll be happy. And they never find that one thing. So don't drive yourself crazy. The fact that you're inspired by the, by the idea of repairing the world, you're on the right track. That's all that you need. And it's not your need. So we have only one, one basic need. Tell me who needs me for what. That's all. And that's what the Bible is all about. It's not about getting you to heaven. It's God telling us what he needs from us. So why do we need world peace? Because we hate getting shot or bombed? No, because that's what he wants. Why do we need to give charity? Because that's what he wants. Why do we need to, uh, to be nice to each other? Why do we need to repair the world? Because that's what he needs. And his need is real. So it does two positive things. Number one, if I'm not the needy one, I can relax. I can breathe. And this guilt thing and this competition, like who's right and who's wrong and who's gone. I don't care. I don't need this. If we're all needed, then we're all needed by the same God for the same purpose. God, that, that's a beautiful world. That's a beautiful world. So, if you want to put it in concrete language, what does it mean, repair the world? Stop being needy. Be needed. Everybody, without exception. There is no, you know, we're now 8 billion. And we just reached 8 billion? 8 billion people. Is that too much? Is that too many people? No. We're talking about God's need. Does he need 8 billion people? I don't know. He may need 30 billion people. He's, he's big. <laughs> His plans are huge. So what's, what's 8 billion people? It's nothing. Every one of those 8 billion people is indispensable to God's plan. Whole new respect. And that's why we're so open. I mean, either we all do it, or it's not going to happen. So you can't isolate yourself and think you're doing well. Because if there's one person out of the 8 billion that isn't doing what God needs, 
the world's messed up. So yeah, it's a big plan. But even thinking about it is so inspiring. It's so uniting. It's so healthy. Does it make sense? We are created and we are needy. The creator needs nothing. How did that ever make any sense to anybody? The creator of the entire universe needs nothing? Oh yeah, he's perfect. Yeah, then he wouldn't create the world. So what are you saying? He doesn't need anything? He started all of this and he needs nothing. And I didn't ask for any of this and I'm the needy one. It's backwards. It's upside down. All I need is to be needed. Just tell me where and when. I'm there. So God says, I need you to take care of each other. Okay. It's so much more fun to be needed than to be needy. It's so much more fun to do what someone else needs than to do what I need. It really is. I don't know how we miss this. How do all the psychologists and psychiatrists, how do they get it? What was it? Freud messed up the whole world like this? <laughs> oh, you have repressed needs. You got to. I don't have any needs. Nobody would, nobody would ever be depressed if they felt needed. So how do we do this? We can be nice to each other. Will that solve the problem? Not if we feel like we have mutual needs. It'll last for a while and then we'll be back to war again. The only time we'll really have peace is when we don't need anything. Let's serve the Creator. Serve the Creator means He needs. I was talking to a Catholic priest here in the neighborhood. And he says, my message to the teenagers is that it's their job to fix the world. Right? I said, wow, that's, that's, a, that's a very good message. That's a lot better than it's your job to get to heaven. But add just one little detail. Yes, it's your job to fix the world, but who really needs the world fixed? The Creator. He got so emotional. He got so excited. He was pounding. We were sitting in a restaurant. He's pounding on the table and he says, I knew it! I said, what? He says, all through divinity school. They kept telling us, God in heaven doesn't need anything. The Father doesn't need anything. The Son is worried about you. I said, come on. What kind of Father is that? He says, I knew it was the Father. It is. Who needs the world repaired more than the creator of the world? So where do we fit in? Well, we are his agents. So we're literally turning the world upside down, not just being nice people. Basically what I'm saying is the reason we can work together, the reason we need to work together is because we all have the same job. We may do it differently, but we all have the same job. If you enjoyed this conversation or this topic and you're looking for more information, or you want to hear it again from another angle, there is a way to do that. And that is in this book. It's all there. Order it from Amazon. You can read it, reread it, and share it. I want to invite you to join us as VIPs, partners in our work, and join us also for uh, a personal chat with other members of the VIP club, 
We talk about many things. There's an opportunity to ask, to respond, to make a comment, to meet the other supporters. And together we can really make a difference in Jewish life and in life in general. So join us. It's good to know dot org. Log in, call, make contact, and join us with the VIPs.